thank you everyone for coming, for our visitors. Uh, I'm uh, Jack Spraga. It's my honor to be uh, president of this great institution. And uh, uh, this is always uh, one of the culminating events of the year, one of the highlights of the year at any time of the year. Uh, we're, we're so proud of this, uh, this event. Um, if I could, I'd like to ask uh, all of our current, not the people who are going to retire as of today, I suppose, but uh, our current our, our retirees, if you would stand and thank you for coming to visit with us. Our current reti retirees, thank you very much. Thank you. And I want to uh, embarrass her if I could, uh, President Emerita Eileen Farley is here. Thank you very much. <laughs> now as we get started, uh, unfortunately I want to take a somber note and that is, you know, on the heels of the Boston Marathon Massacre and subsequent events in Newtown, uh, we just can't uh, ever lose track of uh, that unfortunate time and uh, the, vic the victims. So if we could take a moment of silence, uh, not only for the victims of uh, this violence, but also for our own members of our own uh, BCC family who have uh, passed away this year. If we could take a moment of silence, please. Thank you very much. Uh, to begin with, I want to uh, start out about our employee recognition garden. If you've been to the campus during the year, uh, you've seen the construction outside of our, of our art gallery, uh, some of the detours that you had to take, uh, but um, there was a purpose for it. Uh, way back, one of the things I'm most proud of uh, uh, since my start was that we instituted uh, the idea of honoring with uh, what I thought was a living uh, tribute, uh, if you could, by trees and plants and bushes and things for people who reach certain service levels. Um, we have uh, uh, we had bulbs and perennials and flowering bushes and evergreens in honor of the five-year, 10-year, 15, and 20-year employees. And we planted trees near the pond for uh, employees who reached the milestones of 25, 30, 35, and 40 or more years of service. And that, uh, that worked fairly well, I thought. Uh, uh, but uh, our uh, college family has grown throughout the years and uh, we're looking for a more appropriate way to honor our employees. Uh, and I'm pleased that we uh, have uh, started, and it's uh, just partially open, uh, partially uh, completed, a uh, employee recognition garden that is being completed near the art gallery uh, to honor those with five to 45 years of service as you reach each of those milestones. The tradition of trees and other plantings have been in continued through the design of Michael Radner, the landscape architect. And uh, if I could ask Michael to stand for recognition, Michael is here. There he is right there. Thank you, Michael. Landscape architect. Then by incorporating sculptures into the landscape design, it was a creative way to extend the art gallery courtyard sculpture garden uh, that, that is in the, uh, I don't know what to say, the rear of the, of the art gallery. And now we've extended it so it's kind of in the front door, uh, very obvious uh, as you walk onto the campus. And I would like to uh, recognize artist Nancy Selvage, who uh, was selected to design the six sculptures symbolizing the stages of garden life. Each, each uh, sculpture includes a planter with a sprout uh, for employees with 5, 10, 15, and 20 years, a blossom and flower uh, sculpture for 25 years, leaves for 30 years, and fruit for 35 years, and seed for 40 or more years. And with the addition of today's honorees, the names of over 100 current and retired employees will be displayed on plaques on the sculpture's rim, and the new names will be added each year. Uh, so I would like, uh, I would like to invite um, 
Nancy Selvage, who was also here, uh, uh, the artist to uh, stand and take a uh, be recognized. Thank you, Nancy. And special appreciation is due also to the students of uh, Professor Marisa Millard's Art 292 class who worked with uh, Nancy Selvage on the design of the plaques and the granite carvings. These students are here today and I would like them to stand and be recognized and uh, Professor Millard if she's here. Would everyone stand and take part in this? There's Professor Millard and her students. Thank you. Great job. And also to stand and be recognized, others who participated in this uh, great project, uh, 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 Tapa Awalaju, Kathleen Hancock, Steve Kenyon, Linda Danzel, Joe Desa, also assisting. Would you stand to be recognized, please? <laughs> Joe and Linda, Steve, Kathleen, and Tapa. Thank you. This is an opportunity to recognize the dedication and commitment of our colleagues, uh, and it symbolizes an important truth of our uh, community college at Bristol here, namely that those who have chosen to make our career here have roots planted here. This garden is a place to recognize how each of us leaves something of ourselves uh, at Bristol Community College. Six sculptures will be erected to complete the garden, and I, as I mentioned, two are already completed. So I invite you, uh, if you have the opportunity, to take a stroll over to the Recognition Garden, and it's just outside on the west side of the Art Gallery. Okay, I, I am very grateful for that. It's something we, uh, I always say that our, our most precious resource is our human resource, and we want to honor the, the great service that uh, uh, members of our BCC family contribute uh, to BCC uh, at the various levels and and you know it, it's uh, it, I'm not sure about the that it should only be at 5 10 15 as opposed to 1 2 3 4 5 every year there is there are contributions that are made okay so now we will get to those service uh, recognition awards and uh, if I could uh, invite uh, the people who will be uh, honored for their five-year service. If they could come up and stand uh, adjacent to the stage here. Five years of service. each one to come uh, individually as I call their name. Uh, Professor Samad A Adams. Professor Samad Adams. I'm not sure he's here today. Dean William Barardi. Dean William Barardi. Come on up. I should have asked him to stand in alphabetical order. Christine Bourgeois, Professor Christine Bourgeois. <laughs> Sharon Brunel, Sharon, five years. Sai Chinaswamy, Sai here, Dean Sai Chinaswamy, Trisha Cloutier, Trisha Cloutier.
Jenna, Deepa Tolley. Jenna. Okay. Patricia Zen, Dean Patricia Zen. <laughs> Denise DiMarzio, Professor Denise DiMarzio. Rene Duma. Rene? Okay. Uh, Deborah Deasy. That's Deborah Deasy. Harold, Harold Toomey. Kathleen Howell. Kathleen? Uh, Michelle Kelly uh, took ill this morning, so she uh, built, called and said she was unable to make it. Igor Koloda. Igor. Lisa Noel. Lisa Noel. Monique Oliveira. Deborah St. George, Deborah. <laughs> Beth Lazina, Beth. Kalemu Walden George. And last but certainly not least, Doug Clar Carrier. Douglas Carrier. Ladies and gentlemen, can we recognize five years of service to Bristol Community College? There's more food up there while you're waiting. Thank you. Five years of service to Bristol Community College, ladies and gentlemen. Can I invite the 10 year people? 10 years of service, please come forward. <laughs> 10 years of service, please. Yep. Please come on up to the stage. We couldn't fit the five year, but we can fit the ten year.
Okay, 10 years of service, Carol Constantine. Carol Constantine. Elizabeth McCarthy. <laughs> Professor Farah Habib. Farah Habib. <laughs> Margaret O'Brien. Who's that? Delia Lagarde. Delia. Shania Palmer. Shania. <laughs> Lou Massa. Lou Massa. Joe Pereira. Joe Pereira. <laughs> Just like in the service, the mailman is the most popular mail call, mail call. <laughs> Except when he brings the bill. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 10 years of service for Bristol Community College. Please come forward in front of the stage. 15 years, please. Professor Deborah Anderson. Deborah Anderson, come right up. <laughs> Ann Ibera. Ann Ibera. Dana Norman. Dana? Dana Norman. Vasco Cadero. Vasco. Paul Jefferson. Paul Jefferson. Vice President Joanne Pelletier. Joanne Pelletier. <laughs> Come 
Margaret Coral. Margaret Coral. Let's pay. <laughs> William Long. William. Sue Shannon. Sue Shannon. Ralph DeJardin. Ralph. Ralph, please. Roxanne Malloy. Roxanne. Maria Silva. Maria. <laughs> Kevin Garganta, Professor Kevin Garganta. <laughs> Carol Mello. Carol Mello. Roland Sullivan. Roland. I don't think she can make it today. Roland Sullivan. Robert Griffith. Robert. <laughs> Professor Marisa Millar. Professor Marisa <laughs> Keith Tony. Keith Tony. We wanted also to recognize uh, posthumously uh, Professor Susan Hoy. And uh, we're going to take a moment for Susan Hoy. <laughs> Thank you. Linda Mulready. Linda. Professor Martha Williams, Martha Williams. <laughs> Chief Wayne Wood, <laughs> Wayne Wood. Carol Tucker, Carol Tucker. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 15 years of service at Bristol Community College. And we have the 20 year people come to the stage. 20 years. <laughs> 20 years. Right, 20 years of service, Donna Davis, Donna Davis. <laughs> Wayne Golan, Wayne Golan. 
J. Thomas Grady, Professor Grady. And I don't think she could be with us today, but Professor Marlene Pollock. Marlene Pollock. 20 years of service to Bristol Community College, ladies and gentlemen. We can't get a picture. The eggs are getting cold. <laughs> 25 years of service. 25 years of service. Please come forward. Onto the stage. 25 years. James White. Twenty-five years. Okay, twenty-five years, Dean Susan Bozzano. Susan Bozzano. To Sisodio. <laughs> Honorado de Casa. Honorado. <laughs> Becky Farrell. Becky Farrell. Roberta Garnabel, funny. <laughs> Jane Kitchen, Jane Kitchen. <laughs> Christopher Lebrow, I couldn't make it today, but he's 25 years, Chris Lebrow. He used to be the mailman. <laughs> Carol Martin. Professor Carol Martin. Kiarkia Piance Song. <laughs> I practiced and he didn't make it. All that. Uh... <laughs> Professor Howard Tinberg. And Linda Baveros, who is not here today. Linda Baveros, 25 years. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 25 years of service to Bristol Community College. <laughs> thank you, thank you. 30 years of service. 30 years. Please let us know if you need any assistance getting up to the stage. <laughs> 30 years. Be careful on the stairs, right? <laughs> 30 years of service. Ka Carl Anko. Carl Anko. Karen Giglio, Karen Giglio. <laughs> Carol Ginsburg, Carol Ginsburg. Yeah. 
Unfortunately, she's ill and can't be with us. Cynthia Jansen. Cynthia Jansen, 30 years of service. <laughs> Vice President Steve Ozog, 30 years. <laughs> Mary Ellen Patine. Mary Ellen. Virginia Winstanley, James Winstanley. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 30 years of service to Bristol Community College. What a wonderful tribute. Now we do have a uh, one 40 year uh, person who would be uh, recognized but unfortunately couldn't be with us and that's Professor Priscilla Grosser. Professor Priscilla Grosser, 40 years at Bristol Community College. What a tribute. Well now we're going to uh, begin the section of the presentation in which we recognize our retirees. Our retirees and we're gonna start with this video. the word that comes to mind is authentic. Um, I would say caring, but um, mainly authentic. She is the ultimate professional. She is very dedicated. She was a perfectionist, hard worker. Ethics. And the reason I say that is because Professor Chadwick in all five of her courses would always, always emphasize ethics in terms of the criminal justice system. Whether you wanted to be a state trooper, local police officer, federal law enforcement officer, work in the correctional system, probation, it all starts with ethics, being an honest person and always doing the right thing even when no one is looking. So when I think of Suzanne Chadwick, I think of the word ethics. Professional. The first word that comes to mind when I think of Jane is probably consistent. And when I say consistent, I mean in a couple different ways. She's, you know, a consistent employee, She's consistent in that she's always happy. Pizza, because Muriel and I spent many, 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 many nearly daily lunches down at Papa Gino's. I would say the word is professionalism in the broadest sense. Uh, she is thorough and absolutely meticulous about completing all assignments, but carries them out in such a way that it's a model for the rest of us at the college. My favorite part of the job was um, working with the wonderful people in Division 4. Um, the faculty, my dental hygiene faculty, other health sciences faculty, support staff, we have the best support staff, and students. Um, we have amazing students in dental hygiene. I've had many jobs here, and I think they all have a common thread, and that probably was just dealing with people. And I think I enjoy that. I enjoy working with people. I enjoy helping people, whether it be students, faculty, staff, general public. Lunch? <laughs> um, probably helping people. When I was doing service and support for all those years, going to um, help somebody solve a problem was very satisfying, especially their appreciation. It was fun when you would show up with a brand new computer system for them and you felt like Santa Claus, you know, and they treated you as such. That was probably the most enjoyable part. Uh, always students being able to teach uh, art majors particularly. They, um, they're really interesting people. They have philosophies and ideals and, and you know, they really concentrate on what they're after. So that was, that's the most fun. What I'll always think of Jane, what I'll always remember Jane for is her willingness to help out anybody and you know when she starts something she always completes it fully, all tasks are completed fully. Um, she's just you know been very easy to work with and I'll definitely miss working with her. She's been a very reliable employee and somebody that I, you know, I'll definitely miss. I will remember that Karen is just my mother. 
so many times when I have come to her uh, saying, you know, complaining about something or telling her something that went wrong, she would just lecture me like she was my mother. And, and I, I always say that she's my mother in, reincarnated because she's, she's just takes on mothering everybody. And by the way, not just as a mothering, oh, aren't you sweet, aren't you wonderful, but a, don't do that, that's not the way to do it. Christopher, for Christ's sake, three times. Yeah, well, stay over there, we need five minutes. Without right. you being in a door. It's not rocket science, go down to the first floor. Sorry. <laughs> I just can't help it. All right, my husband told me, bite your tongue, step back, give, give, don't walk through doors. In my opinion, Ron's legacy at Bristol Community College is um, that he brought the art department into um, a much more professional capacity. He, um, he worked with the administration to get the, the courses um, lengthened to six um, hours a week. Uh, which just really made a huge difference in the quality um, of the teaching and the caliber of the student work. And what I will both remember and treasure about Christine is her high standards of professionalism and her expectations for her students and faculty and the quality of her program and most importantly that she is kind, caring, and compassionate. I would have to say her legacy is twofold. First off, she was able to kind of take the torch from Professor Roth as becoming, you know, the first of a, a number of uh, successors to the coordinatorship of the program, you know, which wasn't easy after Ray LaVertue and Barry McKee had held the post for so long. We all kind of had to step in, but she made it easy for me to take over in her stead, so I felt comfortable with that. And she's also been a real help in terms of getting a bulk of the program online by launching a few distance learning courses. That's important. Well, she's one of a, a classy set of people who worked here that you could always depend on. And no matter what, um, she usually, I mean, she, they just, they did it, you know, she just did it efficiently. She just did it well. She went and usually did something above and beyond what you needed. Um, you, and fixed it before you knew, you knew it had to be fixed. She was very pleasant. She was great uh, with students and other people who called the office. Uh, she took good care of all our customers. Uh, what will I always remember about BCC and my colleagues? Uh, the tremendous amount of respect that I have for my colleagues. I think that this is a, a very, very good school um, and that it's a teamwork, so it's, it's from the administration all the way on down to everybody else that has to work together. But I work in the uh, Teaching Humanities Division, and that's just been a, a, a gas for all these years, to work with people that care so much about the students and work so hard on their behalf. And I think, you know, keeping uh, the students out front has always been, you know, a great goal for this school. I've been blessed as I mentioned a moment ago to work with wonderful people, people who care about students um, from Dean Dent um, right down to our newest member, uh, Tina. We've had um, wonderful support staff with um, Roxanne and Tamima and now Charlotte and Tina, um, the dental hygiene faculty who work above and beyond the call of duty, and then of course our excellent students. Um, people have often heard me say, whenever I have a bad day, all I have to do is just go hang around with the students, and I feel great. The, the welcomeness and the family feeling, not just within my department, but throughout, I was fortunate enough to meet many different walks, different people through here, and I think that's probably the most satisfying. We are like a big family. We help each other. We worry about each other, we chat with each other, sometimes we fight with each other in a nice way. Um, but a lot of us grew up here. We started many years ago, I've been here for 31 years, and I think that without BCC, my life would have been very, very different, and not quite so nice.
Thank you, everyone. Well, that wonderful. And we will now also recognize further our uh, retirees. Our first retiree, unfortunately, couldn't be with us, Suzanne Chadwick. Um, she joined the college as an instructor of criminal justice and retired as associate professor of criminal justice. So we want to thank Suzanne Chadwick for her service uh, to Bristol Community College. <laughs> Will Jane Patnell come forward, please, and join me on the stage? Jane Patnell. Jane joined BCC as a technical assistant and will retire at the end of the month as an EDP Systems Analyst 1. Jane, thank you for all of your service. <laughs> Professor Christine Bishop Chapman, would you join me on the stage, please? Christine joined Bristol Community College as a clinical instructor and retires as associate professor and department chair of dental hygiene. Christine Bishop Chapman. Um, I just have something short to say because I didn't know how the video would come out, but it was very nice. Thank you. But I just especially also want to thank uh, the full-time dental hygiene faculty members, Lynn Byers, Trisha Cloutier, and also Joanne Clancy, who's back at the clinic this morning with students, um, for their collaboration, support, and friendship. And of course, our part-time clinical faculty members, too. I'm so proud of what we have accomplished these past 13 years in dental hygiene. We've made significant curriculum and clinical changes to reflect contemporary dental hygiene practice, to ensure that our graduates are well prepared with healthcare professionals for the 21st century. And I also want to thank Dean Pat Dent and my past deans, Dean Hope Burns and Johanna DuPont. You have understood that oral health is an integral part of total health, so thank you for that. <laughs> and also the support that we receive daily at BCC is phenomenal. I want to thank Roxanne Ramos, Tamima Maholeyan, Charlotte Medeiros, and past years, Carol Dempsey and Tamima Uden. We have all accomplished so much together. And of course, my biggest supporters are my family, especially my husband, Gary. He retired last June, and he's been having way too much fun, so that's why I decided to join him. So thank you all so much. The same Bishop Chapman. Muriel Mundy. Muriel, would you join me on the stage? Muriel joined Bristol Community College as a project secretary, and she retired this past January as an EDP entry operator three in the records department. Muriel Mundy. Professor Ron Lister. Professor Ron Lister, please join me on the stage. <clears throat> Ron joined BCC as a full-time instructor of art and retires in May, this May, as a professor of art. Ron Lister, thank you for your service. Thank you. Um, hi. Ooh. First of all, it feels great to be authentic, and they thank Clarissa for that. Um, yeah, 32 years, you have a lot of people to thank, and if I mentioned everyone by name, you'd hate me for that. So a couple people, a couple of quick stories. Um, 20 years as a union officer working with wonderful people who really care about others, it's kind of a theme for today, working with the administration who really care about how the school is run and, and under President Sprager keeping things in order the best way possible. Uh, working with Division One, 
um, seven years as the chair of the department working with Joanne, Dean Joanne Preston has been incredibly, um, an incredible experience, a wonderful one. Um, when I started with the art department, we had a pretty small department. And uh, eight years later, I, I uh, made a phone call one night to Providence and I begged Marissa Millard to come on board and give up you know, a lot of money she was making and come here and teach. And, and, uh, and she did that. Um, and for eight years we worked and, and by the end of that eight years we were up to 200 art majors and we were flying high um, and, and just all fits into place like Eric would come on board at that point and just take over and really do a wonderful job so on a lot of these levels I can you know step aside and really feel good about all of this um, I'd like to thank Dave Feeney for hiring me um, <laughs> But seriously, I think Dave represents to this college uh, the best of leadership. Um, he, I fought tooth and nail over a lot of things with Dave when I was the program director. And I lost more than I won. But if I could prove that it was really good for the school, I, I got what I wanted. And I think David always did that. You know, He kept the school in mind, and, and I always respected that. So I have nothing but respect for all these people. So Division One and, and everybody else has been great. I'd like to finish with another quick story. Um, there's a, outside of Paris, there's Chartres Cathedral. Many of you probably know that, about an hour outside of Paris. It's a Gothic cathedral of the highest order. And it took almost 300 years to build. Near the end of that, they, there was a small sculpture put up of a, um, of a knight in chain mail and a stumbling horse, done almost like Renaissance style, a lot of character and beautifully rendered. And back in those days, it was a living Bible, right, for people that couldn't read. So I think the message was clear, uh, pride goeth before a fall. And I'm a 21st century person at this point, so I kind of take whatever I want from different philosophies and things. Um, and I thought that made sense to me. I haven't used that word in years. I, I try to be humble about things, and I just, I always stay away from it. I want to pull it out of mothballs right now. Um, and uh, ask one favor of everybody, which is keep the bar high, because that's when we do, that's why we're the great institution we are. You know, it's one thing to, you know, love your students and care about them, but keep the bar high. And then to, to use that word, I just want you all to know I'm so very proud to have worked with all of you. Thank you. Professor Ron Lister, ladies and gentlemen. And the next person cannot be with us today that we're going to recognize, Christine Camella. Uh, Christine joined BCC as a junior clerk and uh, retired recently as an EDP entry operator for. Christine Camella, recognize her service and thank you. Karen Giglio, Karen Giglio, would you, would you join us on the stage, please? Karen started at BCC as a senior clerk typist in the Educational Opportunities Center, and she's retiring as a president of the college, an executive assistant to the college. <laughs> I just want to say thank you. It has been most enjoyable for 31 years, and it's due to the hard work of everybody. And I am very, very appreciative for the opportunities that I've had. So thank you, and enjoy. Aaron Gilio. And now it's uh, our honor to recognize our professors emeriti. Uh, Will Sandra Campos and Johanna Dupont please join me on the stage? Sandra Campos. Good morning. Sandra Campos, Professor Emerita, started her career at BCC in 1979 as the director of the Medical Laboratory Technology Program. The name was later changed to Clinical Lab Science. 
Sandy developed clinical affiliations and led the program through its initial accreditation by the National Accrediting Agency for Clinical Lab Science, known as NACLS. Once the program was fully accredited, she repeated the process many times, and it's a ton of work. In addition to writing all of the program self-studies and planning and coordinating the site visits, Sandy served as a NACLS accreditation reviewer for other programs. In the early 90s, Sandy was innovative in introducing two new programs. The first, a one-time, five-year, part-time program for those working in the field to achieve certification in med lab tech and to earn an associate's degree. The retention rate at the end of five years for that program was 95%. That's incredible. The second innovation of lobotomy certificate program was added in 1991 in response to community partners. And continuing a wonderful tradition of community service, Sandy partnered with South Coast Hospitals to organize and host blood drives each semester. BCC's successful blood drives continue to provide much needed blood services to residents in our community. Sandy's personality and caring attitude endeared her to students, colleagues, and CLS program directors throughout the state. Sandy went above and beyond her role to mentor new health career program directors, like me, to learn the ropes, and she was always willing to share her ideas and materials. She led the effort to establish a statewide CLS program directors group. She was held in high regard by area lab professionals as well. She developed an active advisory board and was determined to establish a dedicated lab. And Sandy talked to area providers to donate most of the high-tech equipment that was needed to establish that lab. After Sandy retired, when Deb St. George came on, she heard many compliments about Sandy and the BCC program in the community. Sandy was completely dedicated and committed to the role of director. Under her stewardship, the program grew and thrived. She served 27 years as an advocate, mentor, and role model for countless students, staff, and faculty. And along the way, Sandy upheld BCC's standard of excellence and helped shape the careers and lives of BCC students for nearly three decades. And Sandy, you're um, proclamation will read, you are the consummate professional who modeled exactitude and precision for your students and colleagues, combined with a kind and caring attitude that endeared you to both. As director, you built the program and stayed closely connected to local employers and healthcare providers to ensure that the curriculum and the student's education was tied to the profession's needs and growth. To address the changing field, you developed the phlebotomy certificate and a part-time evening program to credential incumbent workers who needed degrees. Your meticulous and careful attention took the program through its accreditation and several more, but most importantly, provided a steady stream of well-educated graduates to support accurate diagnosis of disease and maintenance of health in the South Coast. Thank you, Sandy. That was not a eulogy. I just have a few words. <clears throat> Thank you, Johanna, and everyone from the division and the college that had input into that. <clears throat> it was very moving. I'm a bit nervous. The last time I had to speak in front of a group was at my granddaughter's first grade class and I read a book about uh, Flag Day and attempted to teach six and seven year olds how to make a six point star. The book went, reading went well, but the star not so much. <laughs> but I think they'll remember that. <laughs> I um, have to admit I was very surprised when President Sprager called me. Um, I have to be honest, I hadn't thought very much about BCC and since not well since my retirement I've been very busy enjoying my grandchildren and this stage of my life. 
But since that call, I have had time to reflect on my years here, and uh, um, I do have some very many memorable moments um, that I, I've been thinking about and recalling, and just being here today and seeing so many friendly faces, it's, it's really nice. I will always cherish these uh, lasting friendships and the opportunity I had, especially to influence the students uh, here at BCC. It is my privilege to be a part of this BCC family. I'm humbled by this experience, and I thank you for this honor. Andy Campos, ladies and gentlemen. Will Cal Grant and Cecil Leonard please join me on the stage? Good morning, everyone. It's uh, my distinct pleasure and honor to be able to spend a few minutes talking about Carol Grant. I could talk probably, being the shy fellow that I am, I could probably be talking for, oh, maybe four, five days. Um, but uh, <laughs> just give me a topic. I'll talk. Topic and a, and a microphone. Carol. I think I'm safe in saying is, uh, was, and still is, an extremely high energy person. Um, once she would take a task on, uh, it was going to be done, come heck or high water. Um, and it might even have been, instead of heck, it may have been something stronger. Uh, she always was enthusiastic. Um, at a recent division meeting, Janelle Arruda gave Carol the honor of being christened the Division Den Mother, um, which is very true. When I first joined the Division, Carol was uh, a mentor, a nagger, a pusher, a kicker, uh, and if you crossed her, unrelenting until whatever you did was corrected. And she always did it relatively nicely relatively nicely. Uh, so it's been an absolute pleasure and honor to work with her. So um, I won't keep going. What I'm going to do is move over and read her citation. Carol M. Grant, Professor Emerita of Business Administration. A tenacious, and that, that's a very applicable word, a tenacious advocate, you vigorously pursued systems and relationships to support students and new faculty. You took particular care and interest in scheduling accounting classes to accommodate single moms and their child care challenges. Enthusiastic, energetic, you searched for ways to enable your students to polish their professional abilities. One of your legacies is the renowned volunteer tax assistance program where students honed critical job skills and provided free professional services to thousands of low-income taxpayers. An advocate for systems, for governance, and for excellence, you remain a role model for your colleagues and your students, still inspiring us all to see how far we can go. Carol M. Grant. Thank you. Thank you so much. I don't need a microphone. I was told I could say a few words. 
I don't ever say a few words. I want to thank Cecil and all those who advocated for me for this award. I also reflected on my career here. I asked myself, how did I arrive at this point, and how was I so fortunate to do what I loved all these years, and now get honored too? Years ago, while I was an internal revenue agent, I was assigned, I was ordered to go into the instructor's cadre and teach. I said no, but as usual, they said, you're going to do it. But there I found my passion, teaching accounting and taxes to adults. Now, a lot of you probably don't relate to that, but <laughs> it really is interesting. I taught for six years before arriving at BCC. Here is where I'm most connected with students. Here is where students really do come first. The main thing, as Dr. Jack always says, and here is where many students have the desire to become better educated and improve their lives. My 32 years here have been very rewarding. For me, graduation day is the best day of the entire academic year, sharing the joy with the graduating students and their families. My success with programs like the Computerized Accounting Lab starting in the mid-80s down at Derby Street, and the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program involving BCC student preparers working at Citizens for Citizens could not have been possible without the cooperation and support of so many. The administration, faculty, staff, and students, and from Citizens for Citizens, most notably Paul Damaris and Mary Lou Brown and my family and friends. I gave up a lot of nights, weekends, and they did too, because I had all those exams to prepare and correct, and the lesson plans and the projects, but I loved the classroom. It was a lot of work, but when you do what you love, it feels less like work. My reward to this point was contact with my former students who share with me their success stories and my part in them. This award is a culmination of my teaching career. I am truly grateful. Thank you. Al Grand, ladies and gentlemen. Al's granddaughter is holding up a great sign. Would you stand up and show everyone? Huh? I love you. Yeah. <laughs> that was wonderful. Al Now, would David Williams please join me on the stage and uh, Ara Galenia? Our, our widow Mary is also here. Good morning. This will be brief. Uh, the History Department and Division Two are extremely pleased to be able to say um, A. Arthur Galenian, Professor Emeritus of History, a true scholar. He spent his entire career studying, improving, and questioning his extensive knowledge of history, philosophy, and biblical studies. To the delight and enrichment of his students and his colleagues, Arthur was one of the pioneer generation at BCC when everybody did everything. He enjoyed making ancient and modern history come alive in the classroom. He relished serving as the voice of reason and wisdom in college governance, as chair of the history department and division chair, and as an active member of the college faculty. His 39 years as an educator at the college were marked by a commitment to high standards as well as to kind, welcoming, and generous outreach to new faculty, both full and part-time. And it is really a great pleasure that he finally gets this award.
Ladies and gentlemen, we're honoring the late Arga Galenian. <clears throat> and I want to point out that uh, uh, Professor Galenian's wife, uh, Mary, is here at the, at the reception as well. And uh, thank you, and I'm glad to see the recognition that everybody feels for your husband. Thank you. Well, now we're going to get to the uh, uh, Pride and Performance Awards. Uh, so, can I ask to, to join me on the stage uh, Donna Ayala, Peg Toro, Donna White, and Donald Wood. Each year, the Commonwealth solicits nominations of public employees for the Pride and Performance uh, Program across the state. Each agency's selection committee reviews the nominees and selects employees who have been pr providing outstanding public service. And it is now my pleasure to uh, present the Bristol Community College Award winners. Uh, and uh, uh, in alphabetical order, the first is uh, Professor Donna Ayala, Nursing Department Chair. Peg Coro, Coordinator, Career Planning and Placement, Cooperative Education. <laughs> Donna White, Accounting, Accountant for Administrative Finance. Unfortunately, he couldn't be with us, Donald Wood, adjunct faculty member who has been over 40 years here at the college uh, teaching in our math department. Donald Wood. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 2013 Pride and Performance Award winners of Bristol Community College, Don Ayala, Peg Coro, Donna White, and Donald Wood. Now I'd like to call to the stage Kathleen Burns, who will present uh, uh, further honors and uh, at the end of our program here. Kathleen Burns. Good morning, I'm Kathleen Burns, and I am the chairperson of the 2013 College Awards Committee. The first award that we are presenting this morning is the Silver Shield. The Silver Shield is awarded to members of the college community who have made significant contributions to the college above and beyond the duties and responsibilities of their job description. This year's Silver Shield recipient, the first one is Betty Barboza. The next Silver Shield recipient is Jacqueline Barry.
The next recipient is Patricia Carrero Raposa. who had the funniest reaction when we notified her. She immediately thought she had to book the award in one of the VP's calendars. She asked, who's the award for, which one? <laughs> Not thinking it was for her. <laughs> the next recipient of the Silver Shield is Elizabeth French. Next recipient, Julie Jordan. Silver Shield recipient is JP Nato. Our 2013 Silver Shield recipient. I will now present our most prestigious award, the Scepter and Scroll. Membership into the Scepter and Scroll Society is given to members of the college community who consistently provide exceptional college-wide service um, and leadership above and beyond the duties and responsibilities of their job description. Recipients are installed in perpetuity into the SEPTA and School Society. The first recipient this year is Gabriella Adler. Next recipient, Cindy Poor Pansa. The next recipient, Robert Mazendis.
recipient is Su Suzanne C. Amour, who is working the event. <laughs> so, Suzanne. <laughs> the next recipient, Carl Schnapp. And the last recipient of the Acceptance and Scroll Award is Robert Rack. Twenty thirteen Scepter and Scroll Award. Thank you, Kathleen. I'm also pleased to announce that uh, our Pride and Performance, uh, one of our uh, award winners, uh, has made a late entry, and I want to recognize Donald Wood and ask him to come up uh, to come up to the stage. Forty years, more than forty years of service. In math, I can see history, but math. <laughs> Thank you all. I'm extremely pleased. I love my education. I love the people that I'm working with here at Bristol Community College. I've had a wonderful time here and at UMass Dartmouth. I, this is totally unexpected, but remember, I had a class and the students come first. Oh, thank you all very much. Donald Wood. Well, that, uh, that closes our program. I want to once again recognize uh, Chef Carissimo, Chef Esteban Martinez, Gloria Petra, Suzanne St. Amor, and all of those students. They take all the credit, but the students do all the work, right? <laughs> Another wonderful day. And uh, please don't forget, if you haven't had enough to eat, we have Scoop by Scoop ice cream uh, this afternoon at 2 o'clock out in front of the building. It's our way of the administration's way of uh, showing appreciation for all you've done. Before you leave, could I ask all of the retirees, including the current ones, to stand once more to be recognized. All of our retirees. Thank you for all you've done for BCC. Thank you for coming everyone, enjoy.